sorry, there we go. Good morning. We will go ahead and call our MAPS 4 Citizens Advisory Board meeting for April 6, 2023 to order. Um, item two on the agenda, items for individual consideration. I, 2A, approved minutes of the March 2nd MAP Citizens Advisory Board meeting. The minutes were included in your packet. I hope you've had a chance to take a look at them. If I would now take uh, either a motion and a second to, well, we've got a motion and a second, so no changes, although please cast your votes. Yeah. Ooh, we're off and running. <laughs> Is it not? I don't have my back. Okay. Alan, will you help Harry? Y'all have turned mine off. <laughs> no, we have not. I vote yes. Okay, the motion passes, thank you. <coughs> Moving on to item 2B, receive the MAPS 4 monthly financial report ending February 28th, 2023. Mr. Todd. Thank you, Madam Chair. You have in your packet, uh, as you said, the monthly financial report for the period ending 228-23. On the revenue side for the month, $12,023,102. Fiscal year of $96,451,771, and for a total of $355,338,716. On the expenditure side for the month, $5,601,073. Fiscal year, $8,933,057, and a total of $110,175,223. And I want to uh, uh, bring your attention to the uh, point that we are 1.3% above collection target. Fantastic. Any questions for Mr. Todd? Bruce, I have a quick question, yes. David. How often the, uh, are the uh, projections updated? Uh, the projections are not updated. They are the projections. Okay. And that's what we're going off of is the original projections. Okay. I didn't know if that was adjusted periodically <coughs> as we note the, the collections and whether above or below. No, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so I take a motion and a second to accept the report. Waiting on a second. <coughs> it's not waiting. It just says waiting. I froze it. Okay, you did. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Let's do it verbally. Yes. Okay. So do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. There we go. Any opposed, same sign. <coughs> okay. Okay, let's just move on to item 2C. Uh, there we go, the motion, we, re, the report has been received. Uh, moving on to item 2C, design update presentation on the Family Justice Center. We like to periodically bring you updates as to what's going on, and, and this is one of the first uh, building projects that you get to see. And um, we're still early in the design phase of this, and what you're going to see is still subject to change. But wanted to show you the work that has progressed so far, and I want to emphasize again that the work is subject to change. But Dan Hayes is here from AHMM. And like to call him up, and he's going to take you through what they've done so far on the Family Justice Center. Good morning. Morning. Uh, thank you very much for allowing us to talk to you today. Uh, we're really excited about this project. We've had a great working relationship. Can you speak into the microphone? Sorry. Sorry. We've had a good working relationship with Maps 4 and with Palomar, and uh, this is a really exciting project for us. So we're pleased to be here today to talk to you about it. Um, so this is just a quick overview of where the site is. Uh, I'll see if my um, pointer is working. No, it's not. Um, but you can see Hudson that runs up there, the existing Palomar building, uh, and a Fassler Hall down to the, down to the south. And the red box there just uh, denotes where the, the site is. Um, this is just a list of all the um, partners uh, of the project that we've engaged with during the design process so far. This is a very complex um, project with lots of different stakeholders. So the first thing we did was sit down, meet with all of those different groups uh, and understand exactly what their needs, wants and hopes and dreams were for this new, new facility. Um, this is just a bit more detail looking at the, the site layout just to orientate yourselves. The Palomar, existing Palomar building is down uh, to, the, to the bottom of the page uh, on Hudson. 
uh, north is uh, to, the, to the right. Um, a couple of things to note is that there's a significant change in grade across the site, uh, starting at sort of zero, going up across the corner of the site to about 13 feet. Um, there's a current uh, alley that runs across, so we're going to look to relocate those services uh, that run through the middle of the site. And at the corner there, the bottom uh, left-hand corner, the, there's a parcel of land that wasn't in the ownership uh, of Midtown Renaissance, who's donating the, the land, um, and that's now under offer, um, so we'll have the whole of the, um, the, the, the site that you see there that's hatched. Um, the first thing we do following all those discussions with all the different partners was start to think about um, what are the important strategies for the, for the project. Um, and these were the eight sort of key things that sort of came out of those discussions. The first was to create a light, bright 21st century building. I think if you know the Palomar existing facility, that there isn't much natural light. And so to create a generous, generous floor to ceiling heights uh, and lots of natural light. Safety and security is obviously a big thing. Um, uh, of this part of this building. Um, we're keen to create a, an open, engaging building with the community, but also something that's very secure. So that's quite a difficult thing for us to do at the first floor level without creating a sort of fortress of a project. Uh, connection to nature to help with healing, and I'll come into, into uh, onto more detail of that shortly. Um, a coherent entrance, one single entrance. If you're at a time of crisis and you're having the worst day of your life, we think it's important that you know exactly where you're going to go to get help. So that clear entrance was a, was a clear um, uh, sort of driving uh, idea at the start. Uh, providing spaces for healing and support for both groups uh, and for individuals. Engaging with the community, creating active edges. As I mentioned earlier, we don't want to create a fortress. Enjoying architecture uh, and low energy and future proof. We know what the time Palomar move into this building, it, their needs would have changed, so this building needs to be able to adapt um, over time. This was just a couple of images of our outdoor spaces in connection to nature. Um, some of the most successful outdoor spaces we've created in Oklahoma City are, are those actually that are protected from the sun uh, and from the wind. So the smaller, some smaller spaces uh, are actually very good um, for, your, uh, for, for plants to grow uh, and for people to actually use throughout the year. Um, so I'm going to sort of reveal to you some of the first floor planning stages because it's a bit overwhelming when it, it, it's just sort of presented as one whole thing because there's a lot going on. Um, so I'll try and talk you through that in a little bit uh, of detail. So this is just the outline of that site. Again, the grey you see is the, the massing of the, the overall building. Um, the first thing is that this building has been designed with the clients in mind. So they, they, they were the number one priority when we were thinking about how we start to lay out these spaces. Um, uh, so clients come through, there's the reception area, uh, then they pass a security check and they're into um, a, a space where they, they can move around uh, as much as they want, uh, but primarily they're met by navigators who will take them to an intake room. They could be there for one hour, they could be there for eight hours, um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, this is probably one of the worst days of their life. So. One of the primary goals from the start of this project was to make sure that uh, at every point in that journey you have a connection to nature and a connection to outside. So all those intake rooms uh, have a direct view out to the uh, external courtyard at the back, which is shown by all those pink arrows. The blue uh, dotted line that you see running around is a walking route. Some people like to walk and talk and think. So that's an indoor-outdoor route that, that runs around the outdoor space. Um, uh, as well to allow people to, to decompress. And then the, the, the intake rooms are clustered around intake lounges, so they're spaces where you can grab a cup of coffee, uh, you, you can use the computer, and little nooks where you can uh, hide yourself away. To try and activate that corridor, there's more of the key client spaces, so the client store and the client kitchen uh, interact with those lounges uh, directly across the corridor. And you see the child's sanctuary there is to the north that faces out that has its own outdoor play space as well. Um, then, this is where it starts to get a little bit more complex. Um, but we have, uh, the, to, the, to the left there, we have a loading area um, for donations to be received, washed and cleaned and processed. Animals, uh, sanctuary uh, down there as well, where we have uh, kennels and, and cat room. There's some mechanical rooms. Um, and then to the right of the page, we have the same medical, so the sexual assault uh, nurse examination rooms. Um, that's also linked into that main circulation corridor as well. And then more of the community aspects, we have Variety Care, which is a partner of Palomar that provide ongoing medical care to uh, survivors and also to the members of staff. That has its own secondary entrance uh, from the street. And then on the corner, anchoring the corner and connecting in with the rest of Midtown, we have a cafe and a community space that are linked together that can be used separately or, or together. So that's the sort of overall first floor plan. 
There's a little green arrow that you can see there next to the intake lounge, uh, and the next slide is a view of what you would see uh, of that intake lounge. And that would, could look something like this, still in early development, um, but it, we are deliberately making it more domestic in scale, so we have a slightly lower floor to ceiling height, and we have different areas for people to sit in groups or individuals, and some um, more domestic elements like fireplaces and, and, and TVs and things like that. Moving up to the second floor level, uh, this is fundamentally a partner's uh, level. So all the Palomar partners are, are based here, um, and they go down and they meet the clients in the intake rooms. Clients do not come up to this floor. So it's fundamentally an office floor. I won't go through all the different partners that are there, but they're, they're highlighted by different colors. Uh, and we, we're trying to um, locate all the shared uses of meeting rooms and, and gathering spaces in the center of that plan to try and bring people together uh, and help them work uh, collaboratively. And then on the third floor uh, is community space. Uh, so this is a large community room with a, a, a terrace that faces out over downtown. Uh, and that this allows all the partners of Palomar to meet together in groups uh, and workshops. Um, and that room can also be split down uh, and operated as two separate rooms. And then we have more meeting room spaces in the orange. We have a gym there in the blue and a catering kitchen next to it. Uh, and then we have a whole therapy suite. So these are therapy offices uh, and, and areas where um, people can gain help. Uh, and then group rooms that, again, face out to a terrace to the, to the north. Um, and these are some very early views of what this building could potentially look like. Um, this is probably all subject to tech change. Uh, and we're not proposing it's a white building. Uh, this is just looking at massing and, and how this sort of works with the street. Um, so as you can see, the first floor there, um, we're trying to get as many windows in as we can to activate that um, uh, facade and engage with the community. And then the two floors above are sort of fundamentally office floors, so they're, they're sort of being treated in, in that way, which creates this sort of banding effect, um, which we think is, is quite successful. Uh, this is looking uh, from the north, looking down. You can see the, the child sanctuary there on the right. Uh, and then the main entrance is clearly defined by a break in the band uh, that you see with the, with the double height space. And that's a view of the uh, corner. Clearly, that's the, the, that's the cafe space that's clearly uh, anchors that corner and it it's faces the opposite direction to the main entrance to Palomar and that's a deliberate uh, thing. So any member of the public can use the uh, cafe space um, uh, and, and they're not gonna get confused with the main entrance into the Palomar building. Uh, and, and that's a very quick summary of sort of where we are. The last slide is just a timeline uh, to show where we are in the, in the program. So we started this at the end of last year. Uh, obviously, we're currently in April where the red dashed line is right now. Uh, and we're due to deliver task one on the 23rd of May. Uh, all the pink little stars that you see there are, are workshops or client meetings that we've had. So we've had a really um, collaborative relationship with, with Palomar and MAPS all the way through this process to gain their feedback, and, and we've introduced that into the plans as we've gone. Um, then there's obviously the review period, and then we'll commence task two after that. Um, and that's it. Sorry, that was a bit rushed, but no, that's it gives you a good summary. <laughs> you talk fast. Okay. <laughs> uh, any questions for Mr. Hayes? Okay. It sounds like it's going fairly smoothly and, and Beautifully. So, so yeah. touch wood. Yeah, so far it's going really well. It's it's a fantastic project, and uh, we've had great great engagement with with the Palomar team, and it's it's fantastic. So I think my only question is, as I recall, the parking lot is on the west side of the building. Correct. Okay, and so um, and I saw you got a little bit of a an entrance there, but the primary entrance being on the other side of the building. Was there any consideration for? having the, Co the correct. primary building on the yeah, closer sorry, to the parking I, lot. I, I did skip past that. You can see there's a very, uh, there's a very faint arrow there that, that suggests a connection to the, to the north of the site, which is the, the parking garage right. that you're talking about. Um, we are working right now in Midtown Renaissance to, to make sure that there is a secure entry from the parking garage into that outdoor space. Okay. That would be for staff who work in the building. Um, and it would also be for an emergency situations if someone's being chased or they can uh, phone Palomar before and say, I'm coming in, and they will guide them to a specific, specific location within the parking garage, and then they will be led through and into the facility. So okay. that connection is quite important. Um, yeah. It's difficult with the levels, but we're, we're working through that. Okay, good. Yeah, because that was exactly what I was thinking about, the safety of both staff as well yeah. as clients. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. yes. 
Teresa, the subcommittee heard this presentation. No, we didn't hear this presentation. We heard a much <laughs> longer, deta more detailed presentation on Tuesday, and everybody in the subcommittee seemed to be so excited about uh, this plan, and of course, with the caveat that there will be changes, but uh, so excited about the versatility of the plan, bringing all the partners together, and the opportunity it gives for clients to, uh, to have the open spaces, the security, without feeling like they were in a block building, the outdoor spaces, all of this. We are so excited for this and uh, eager to see it underway and serving the, the people of Oklahoma City in the area. That's great. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yep. Um, any other questions or comments? I think The name of the medical that was on here. Could you go back to, um, it was on the first floor. The first floor. Yeah, this SANE medical. Yes. Is SANE an acronym? Yes, it's Sexual Assault Nurses Examination. So it's a sex, sexual assault um, okay. facility where, where you go if, you, if, if that's happened to you and you get examined. And, and it's, so it's a, it's a medical facility. Okay. Um, I, I figured it was an abbreviation. Yes, yeah. And so um, the periods in between there will make it be good. Instead of, Very you know, because sometimes if a person yes, absolutely. was having a mental break. Absolutely. And, okay, thank you. That's a good point. We'll change that. Okay, good point. Russell, did you have a comment? <clears throat> It's a shared. It's it's a shared space. So I think there's about 130, 140 spaces that would be dedicated to Palomar, and then the rest of that would be a public parking garage uh, for the surrounding area. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry it was so rushed. No. No. Oh, you great job. Okay, moving on to item 2D, recommend approval of change order number one, project M4VA101, maps for downtown arena phase 1A, elevator modernization for an increase of $173,430.55. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, this is a, a change order for an existing project that we have for elevator uh, remodel, if you will. And this is for an additional service elevator and a freight elevator. And in order to get this finished in time for this fall and, and the next uh, basketball season and really get the, the facility up like uh, we'd hoped to, we felt that it was best just to go ahead and change order the next remodel piece in because the lead times on this kind of equipment is excessive now and uh, we've already got a contractor on there that is performing well and we just felt like it was best just to change order this in okay any questions on this okay. not i take a motion in a second <clears throat> waiting on a second yeah same thing so let's do verbal i'm sorry Right, so do we have a second? Okay, Bob. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, same sign. I just need to give it more time. I'm just, I guess I'm just faster, I'm faster than the computer today. The motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to item 2E, recommend approval of change order number two for the downtown arena phase 2A scoreboard replacement for an increase of $90,275. So this is another project that's in uh, Paycom Arena. The scoreboard project is somewhat of a design build project and we knew that there would be additional pieces that needed to be added to the project as we went along. 
um, as the scoreboard was developed and once we understood the power requirements and the weight and those kind of things and we've done a, an amendment for some structural issues now comes the electric piece of it so this new scoreboard needs more electricity up there so this is for a uh, new transformer and amp 400 amp panel and a 225 amp breaker so like i said it's 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 not like we didn't expect this we just couldn't predict it at the time that it was bid okay questions on this change order okay. if not i take a motion and if we've got a motion i'll take a second and we're stuck take a verbal second All those in favor, please say aye. aye. There we go. Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 2F, F, recommend approval of final plans and specifications to be advertised for the bids for the downtown arena phase two improvements. So remember that uh, with the idea that we might be building a new arena, we scaled the, the improvements back considerably, but there are some things that need to be done to uh, continue to keep the, the PACOM modern and competitive because it will still be used for several years uh, as we go along. So Kevin Cook is here with Populous, who is the architect on the project, and he can give us a rundown of what's included in these plans. Good morning. Uh, thanks for having me back. Um, as you remember, I was here last month and gave you guys just a quick preview of, of a few of these spaces. So today I'm going to go through the entire list of what's fully contained in this uh, phase two improvement package. So the first item is the uh, courtside club. Um, this is the largest premium space in the building, and um, this space specifically. Um, they were looking to find the ability to, to get more customers into this space. So the goal here was to eliminate um, a large central bar in this space and, and put in new furniture and seating. And by doing so, you'd have to do a little bit of updates to some of the finishes and things, but not a major renovation of the entire space. So what you see here on the screen is um, on the left, the existing club today has that fireplace and that feature wall. We're looking to remove that fireplace and put in some built-in banquette seating um, and flexible movable tables to support more people. And then the picture on the left here shows the uh, existing central bar that's gonna be demoed and, and taken out, which opens up the space. You can see on the right an image of how much more open that space is and we can get additional banquette seating and, and freestanding seats in that space. Um, there'll be some new TVs and some additional lighting added where the ceiling is updated where that central bar was removed. And then other spaces in the room kind of stay the same. So today this is where they serve uh, food on the side and have some existing TVs. A lot of that is, stays as is, just new furniture. As we move on to the micro lounge, this is an existing uh, founder's suite at the event level and then adjacent to that you'll see a small room that's the a food service support space um, we're looking to grow those two spaces into a new premium offering a new club lounge space um, what this will serve it has a full service bar added to it so um, the bar that's going away in the courtside club this now becomes a home for a new bar so some of the patrons that would have normally used the courtside club maybe just for a drink or a cocktail can now go to this club and allow more people to actually eat in the courtside club. So again, here's pictures on the left of that food service space on the top and the founder's suite at the bottom. And a couple of quick views here of what it would look like when it gets refinished. This, this lounge has you know, darker, darker colors and warmer finishes within it, softer seating. Um, you start to see the bar here on the left side. This will be a full service bar with um, food service equipment, ice machines, refrigerators, coolers, um, and they'll have full service taps on that side. And then to the right, you start to see some of the um, built-in seating and, and areas for people to, to um, stay and, and hang out for a while. And then the picture on the left would be the bar is just outside of the left side of that picture, so it's more of a standing room area in that space. And then the picture on the right is more seating under that dark ceiling 
to give people kind of the flexibility, whether you want to stand and hang out for a few minutes or if you actually want to sit down and, and stay there for a little longer. The South Terrace Club, this is an existing club they have today up at the club level. And what this is showing is really just some quick finishes, updates on the floor. And the biggest element that's changing here is there's um, a series of wall partitions along the concourse. You see that here in the image on the left, which really enclosed that space today. So the idea was to remove those as much as we could and let that really open up so that people in the concourse can see through this space and out into the bowl. And then the picture on the left is the, what it looks like today inside that club. Um, we're not changing the ceiling or the existing bar or anything in there. We're just updating the floor finishes, a little bit of paint, and brand new furniture. And then on the left are the existing terrace boxes that are outside of that space um, that are used today. Um, and what we're looking to do in a couple of them is remove the cabinetry that you see here on this picture on the left, which opens up that space to a larger floor area there. On that picture on the right, you can see how much more space that'll grow. And that'll allow for some more standing room and, and ability to um, invite larger guests or groups into the space. The crew lounge, this is a small room on the event level that's used for concerts and um, other shows that come in their crews go and hang out in this space today. Um, so what you see here in the picture on the left is what that space looks like. Um, and this picture was just, it wasn't really being used, but you know, they try to fill that space with some fun mm -hmm. things to do and couches and furniture and stuff. And so we're trying to rethink that space completely and really make it a really cool hip space. And so you start to see the different types of finishes here with a kind of a reflective ceiling. Um, you know, new wall tile here on the right and some, some bold colors. Um, and we're kind of theming this as kind of a concert or event, uh, show event with some memorabilia, music stuff, other things like that. And then you really get this kind of unique half circle that's backlit at the bar area. It's not an actual uh, physical bar with plumbing and, and coolers and stuff like that. It's just cabinetry and countertops that they can actually bring in um, their own beverage service if they need to for this space. The next item is the multi-purpose locker room. This is an existing locker room today that's, that's used by all sorts of different groups at different times, and particularly like the Thunder Girls and the Drumline and different high school events will use this space. And so the biggest change they wanted to do was to update the restroom area. You can see that on the picture at the top, um, was to divide that into two dedicated restrooms, a restroom A and a restroom B. So we kept all the existing plumbing we could in the, those spaces and then just added or supplemented so that you'd have a couple of extra toilets on the, the bottom restroom, uh, restroom B, and then the top restroom. We're able to keep the plumbing in there but just add some sinks. And this allows them to divide this space into two or three users so that um, they can get more use out of what's there already. Facility show power, this is an item where concerts and events are coming to the building and asking for more power. They've got more lighting, more special effects, more things as more and more shows get bigger and bigger. Um, and so the facility today would like to add some additional power, 2,000 amps. So we found two existing locations where there's some wall space that they can clear out and clean up and, and add this additional power to these areas. The star dressing room. So there's two existing rest, uh, dressing rooms today. Um, you see here on the plan, the, the bottom one that's white is the executive dressing room, which matches the picture on the bottom. Today, they've updated that room. It looks like that with uh, new carpet walls and ceiling and lighting. Uh, the picture on the top is what the other dressing room looks like. Um, it's not a great picture of it, but you know it, it needs updated too. And so the goal here is to just completely update the, the top star dressing room to match the other one, and then to update the restroom finishes with some new tile and, and some paint and stuff. The promoter rooms, the picture on the top left, you can see that's what the promoter rooms look like today. They were recently upgraded a couple of years back. They look pretty good. They've got nice finishes and things in there, but we're looking to update the furniture in them. And then to do something a little bit unique in each of the three rooms to try to uh, give them a little bit of a theme or a little bit more of a wow effect to them. So the picture on the right is what one of the options was to propose a kind of a new wall covering that's got some some liveliness to it, and we're looking at some different options for each of the three rooms to let them be a little bit different. And then there's a restroom that's adjacent to the central uh, middle promoter room where we're also updating the finishes of that room. 
The Thunder Office expansion, this is at the ground level of the building. You can see the picture at the top there. That's what that space currently looks like. It used to be the old kids club uh, space for the building, but has been used for other items as well. Today, I think it's mostly storage. Um, so we're looking to grow. Their staff is growing and they need some more office space. We're looking to change this space into more of an open workspace, work office space. And so we're getting around 20 additional uh, workstations and, and a couple of offices in here to help um, give them a new, new space for people to work. Very minimal though, as far as finishes go in here, just some new carpet, um, a little bit of paint and, and leaving the ceilings open as they are today and, and then mostly office furniture. And then the ASM office, they, the ASM operator would also like to find some, was looking for some additional space for a few more office people. So we found an area at the atrium level. Off to the side, this is the terrace atrium. On the, on the left, you can see the picture. Um, so that space really isn't used too much. And so they said we could you know, partition some of that out and ga gain room for about nine more offices here. Um, but in this case, we're leaving the ceilings as is, leaving the terrazzo flooring in place and really just building partitions to create the office space. The west side box, this is a, a new idea they want to add to the 100 level of the, the seating. Um, what this is, is a couple of new uh, premium ticket options that will be available for concerts or, or Thunder Games. Um, here, and so you would get kind of two select little suite boxes built in. One side has um, fewer seats, about eight seats, but has some digital screens and other things in it. And then this, the other um, seats to the right would be a different type of box. These have premium seats and it's just a new ticket option for people to spend their money on if they want a little bit of a different experience in the building. And then the player corridor. Um, the, ex or the new retractable system that's going in has a new entrance for the players to exit the court. And they will go from that court through this corridor and the NBA has requirements on how tall the doors need to be. I, I think I mentioned this last month. So um, what we're doing here is just removing the existing doors and then cutting the walls up a little taller and putting in nine foot doors to meet the requirements. Okay, so here's, here's the list and a quick rundown of, of all the costs to the right. Um, these are similar costs. But, but updated since the last time I presented these to you all. Um, I will hit on two other items, 13 and 14, that I didn't have a slide of. They're going to do a little bit of rigging updates in the structural grid for show power and lighting to be added. And then some broadcast cabling, some power, and some utility lights also being scattered out throughout the back of house with some of this space. So the current estimate here totals out to be about $4.2, $4.3 million for all of this work, plus when you add in the um, the general conditions, insurance and bonds, overhead profit, and some escalation and contingency percentages that we have in it right now, this rounds out to a total for just under $5.6 million. And then just a quick look at the schedule where we are be, and, and this is kind of the, a pretty critical item for this project, is to get this thing done or as much of this done as possible before the next NBA season in, in October, um, we're really pushed through to get these drawings done as fast as we could. And so here we are today with the sub or yesterday with subcommittee and then sit advisory board today. Hopefully it'll go to council next week, um, which will allow us to then get them out to bid on the 12th. Bids would be due back on the 3rd and then we would be looking for council approval to, to have the construction start on May 24th. Any questions? Hi, questions. <clears throat> What's the square footage of item two, the micro lounge? It's about 1,500 square feet, roughly. And the, to redecorate, it's almost a million dollars? Well, the, the difference here is you're taking out existing spaces, and part of that work in that food service area is, has a lot of food service equipment in it today that's going to be relocated to other food service locations. So we had to find a new home and run some new beverage lines and other things in that space. And then once you add the new footprint of that space, it's kind of a regut of the entire space. Thank Hopefully you. it'll come in cheaper than that. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. Um, thank you so much. Oh. So with these updates, that gives us a what type of life on this building looking forward? Well, well, these updates will 
prolong the building's use in these areas, particularly, um, you know, as, as David mentioned, should a new arena happen, that could be many years still down the road. So, you know, to keep this building in operation, similar to adding the new seats and the elevators and some of the other things that we're already doing, th this is just filling in some of the areas that are lacking and needing updates, like that star dressing room and some of that stuff. It's just, just really time. It's, it's tired and needing an update. I, I would envision, you know, these will be good for at least a decade. Well, and I think one of the other points is that even if, if we do move forward with another arena, it's anticipated PACOM will still be active and still be utilized for concert, concerts and other types of events. And so I think it's my understanding that that's really the, the shift in the tilt of the modifications is with an eye for those kinds of uses, um, not purely as a basketball venue. Any other questions? Hey, thank you so much. You. We appreciate you being here today. So with that, we would take a motion in a second to approve the changes. Okay, we, have a, we have a motion. And we're stuck again. Okay, okay, so we have a motion, we have a verbal second. Kevin? All right, please cast your votes. Okay, the motion passes, thank you. Okay, moving on to item 2G, recommend approval of res resolution transferring 30 million 500,000, no, 30, yeah, 30 million 500,000 from the MAPS4 sales tax fund for the MAPS4 Youth Center Capital Improvement Fund um, and Project MAPS4 Park Operating Maintenance Fund and MAPS4 Street Lights Procurement Fund. So this item is identical to what we've done in the past and it is in conformance with the implementation plan with the schedule of when we would transfer these funds from the collections into the MAPS4 Trust. Questions? Okay. Oh, oh, got it. There we go. Um, all those in favor, or please cast your votes. Come on, come on. There we go. The motion passes, thank you. Moving on to item 2H, recommend approval of architectural services contract with Bacchus Payne Associates for the MAPS4 Youth Center Programming and Planning fee of $455,500. So this is for the, the programming of all of the youth centers. It is anticipated that there will be an amendment for the eventual design of the first youth center with Bacchus Payne but this is our first step. It went through the usual process that all of you have been involved with by now as far as uh, interviews for A&E services. Any questions on this item? Okay, not take a motion in a second. Okay, we have a perfect second. Okay, please cast your votes. The motion passes, thank you. All righty, moving on to item three, discussion items. Mr. Todd, do we have any items to, for the board today? We have a different, okay, uh, um, no. Okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed. It's at the very bottom of my page and I can't see that and I was, I was confused. No, yes, okay. that, we do not. Okay, very good. Um, item four, um, any MAPS4 Advisory Board subcommittee reports? Any reports from the subcommittees? Anything popping that we haven't covered? Okay. Um, 
Item five, update status of MAPS four program. Mr. Todd. Right, so we've added this to the agenda now that we have things underway and, and much more advanced than just the preliminary work that we've done. So I'm gonna hit on some high points that the Coliseum is well underway right now. They're drilling foundation shafts as we speak. Um, the asphalt's been cleared, so the work is going exceptionally well out there. Um, the other project that I, I kind of consider similar to the Palomar is the diversion hub, and it is just a little bit behind Palomar, so we'll be bringing that to you in the near future to show you what's happening on that. Uh, lots of work in parks, and we've got more meetings coming out for engagement with the public on parks. I don't have that list with me, but it is lengthy, and you can get that off the website. And then also BRT is advancing, and they are continuing to have more meetings, and we'll have some information to you next month on where they are on that. Um, there's a whole lot more going on, but those are the main things that, that I'm going to hit on today. Good. Thank you. And I would encourage um, everybody here, board, um, as well as um, members of the public to engage with the park conversations. because that's really the purpose of those projects is to respond to um, what citizens want. And so we don't know what citizens want unless they have the, unless they will tell us. So really encourage participation um, as much as we can. Any questions of Mr. Todd? Okay, moving on to item six, comments by board, staff, and citizens. Mr. Todd? We don't have any. Um, I would like to um, <coughs> say thank you to Mr. Black. Um, he, this is his last meeting with us. Um, he was, as you may recall, because of the redistricting of the wards, um, he is now in the same ward as, as um, Ward 2. Um, and so we are losing Carrie, <coughs> and we are disappointed and sad, but um, very much appreciate you have been a... Um, fantastic voice. You've brought a different perspective. You have represented your board incredibly well and done a beautiful job on the Citizens Advisory Board. So thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you so much. for <laughs> um, Do we have any citizens that have signed up? Okay. Any other comments by board members? Bob? Uh, Therese, just to follow up on what David says, Probably technically a MAPS 3 issue, but the art has been selected for the fairgrounds for the, the entrance that will head up Gordon Cooper Boulevard off May Avenue directly toward the Coliseum. Uh, I'm not going to share any details about that yet, but it, it's phenomenal. Uh, and it will be a very impressive uh, structure coming into the, to the fairgrounds. It'll be something that's part of the public art. The, Mm -hmm. uh, the one percent that we use for that. But the artist has been selected, and uh, I think sometime this fall uh, is the, the target for uh, completion of that. You will be impressed. Exciting. So no, no advanced renderings, no sneak peeks? Well, I don't have them, so oh, I, I okay. can't, can't share them, but okay. you will like them. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Good to know. Appreciate you sharing that with us. Anything else? Okay, anything from staff? Okay, if not... Um, item seven, we are adjourned. Thank you for coming today.